One of our music teachers here at Ann Arbor STEAM worked really hard to win a grant for her classroom to buy a class set of 30 ukuleles that she could use for music instruction. And along with that money, she was able to buy plans and materials to make a cart that would hold 30 ukuleles. So I agreed to help her, and this video will show the process of building that. So the first thing that we needed to do was take the full 4x8 sheets of plywood and rip them down to the correct width. Now, during the process of this video, I'm not gonna be giving exact dimensions for making this because the plans that we use to make this are available as a purchase um, through a gentleman named Dan Pepper. He uses those funds to support his own music program. So I'm not gonna give exact dimensions. If you want to see the plans, check out the link in the description for this video and you can find the plans. Uh, they're about $10, I think. Um, and that way you can buy your own uh, plans if you wanted to make one of these carts yourself. So you can see me going through the process of ripping the full 4x8 sheets of plywood down to the width that we wanted for the sides here. Now the plans called for using shelving boards that were already pre-cut but because we were using full 4x8 sheets of plywood we wanted to make them slightly shorter so they wouldn't be a full uh, 8 feet high. So I'm marking the the height that we wanted here and then I'll go ahead and actually cut them down to size. This was one of the first chances that I'd had to use many of the new tools that we were able to buy for the Ann Arbor STEAM Lab through a really generous donation from Lowe's. So I was really happy to be able to use tools like the circular saw here, the Craig track that I used to cut down the width there, clamps, and all that other good stuff. Using that blue tape along the seams really helped give a much cleaner cut on this plywood. When we first got the circular saw, I didn't have a fine finished blade in the right size, so I was using a relatively rough uh, framing blade for this. Here I'm cutting off an angle on those side pieces. This was shown in the plans and I thought it would look nice, so I went ahead and did that part as well. Not sure it makes much of a functional difference, but um, it certainly adds to the appeal of it. The next thing was to get all of the rails that go through the middle of the cart cut to length. So I measured and cut one 2x4 and then used it essentially as a master to make sure that all the other pieces were the correct width there as well. Another piece that I needed to cut in addition to the rails that span the cart were the 2x4s that the casters would sit on and that was what allowed this to be a mobile cart. So I'd already cut one of those uh, leg pieces there and now I'm just getting it set up to cut the other ones. And there were four of those in total that the casters would be attached to. After getting the side pieces cut, the next job was to route them to add a quarter inch round over to all of the pieces to really soften this and make it so that the cart was easy to handle and wouldn't give anybody splinters or have sharp edges to run into it. And that's especially important because this is used in a classroom where lots of younger students are present all during the week. So I grabbed my router and a quarter inch and a uh, quarter round over bit and went around all of the edges for the plywood sides. And then I went and did the exact same thing on all of the rails as well, which you'll see in a second here. This was really a fun project to work on. I was able to use some of the time during spring break to do this project, and it was a lot of fun getting into the STEAM lab to use it with uh, some tools that I wouldn't normally use with students. It was a really nice workspace and a lot of fun to be able to come in and just work on that. So here I'm using the router with a roundover bit again to get those uh, rails created and rounded down. And then the next piece was getting the top rails marked out. And I needed to get those evenly spaced because each rail, top and bottom, would hold 15 ukuleles. So after a little bit of math to figure out the exact spacing across the distance that we had, I just cut down a piece of paper and used that as a mark so that I could mark out each of the places where the ukulele rests would be. Once those were marked out, I could take them over to the drill press and use a Forstner bit to drill out essentially a half circle for the ukulele neck to rest against. The Forstner bits create a ton of chips and shavings, as you can see here. And initially I had clamped the shop vac to the back of the drill press. And after drilling out one or two of those, I realized that the chips and shavings really weren't going towards the back. They were really mostly coming towards the front. 
So pretty quickly I realized that I needed to move the shop vac hose around to the front of the drill press here, and that seemed to work much better in terms of catching the shavings as they were coming off of the drill press. After I had cut out all of the half circles for the neck rests, I decided to go back over those with the router and round them over as well. I really wanted those top rails that the ukulele necks rested on to be as smooth as possible to prevent any kind of damage to the instruments. And that included sanding those down as well. This is all construction grade pine lumber, so it wasn't particularly smooth to start with. And with the combination of routing and rounding over all the edges, it really improved the wood that we were using to the point where I was pretty confident uh, in terms of it not getting splintery or just being rough to the touch or damaging to the instruments. I did have to mark out the side pieces to drill out supports for screwing them all in, and I used just a little paper template there to make sure that everything was lined up. And once I had drilled all the holes, I could do the same for both sides and then go and attach the feet. Then it was time to put the pieces all together and assemble it, so I used a couple of quick clamps to make temporary shelves to hold those rails into place while I actually screwed them in through the side pieces. And Mrs. Huckabone, our music teacher, was a great help in keeping all of the pieces together as we worked on assembling the whole cart. So here's the top rails going in, and those would hold the bottom of the ukulele, and then adding the top rail uh, that would hold the supports for the necks as well. Once we got one of those in there, it was time to do the exact same process, but this time on the bottom set of rails for the cart. And I was really pleased with how that temporary shelf held on by clamps worked. It really helped support pieces and make that process of assembling the whole cart much simpler. After getting all the rails mounted, we could flip that over onto its back and add the casters. And like I said, these are really important because they allowed this cart to be mobile, and in a relatively small classroom space, that's really important. So I got those marked and had pilot holes drilled out and then attached them with screws and some washers. And then the moment of truth, we could finally tip it up and see the finished product. Now it wasn't entirely done because we still had a few things to add to protect the instrument. So the first thing that we added was some foam insulation like you would use for pipes. So we got that set up and cut down into the right size and then tested it out with a couple of ukuleles just to sort of see the finished fit and finish. And you could potentially cover that foam insulation with cloth or something else, but it seemed to work just fine. And then Mrs. Huckabone went back and added some more finishing touches, some more pipe insulation to the bottom, some pieces of felt for the ukulele necks, as well as a piece of yarn attached to some cup hooks to keep the ukuleles securely onto the rack. And then she went back and individually numbered them so that each student would know what number was their ukulele. And you can see the whole cart on the move here. Overall, I think the project was a really great success. If you are interested in building something like this yourself, definitely check out the plans from Dan Pepper. Congratulations, Mrs. Huckabone and the Steam Ukulele Players. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, subscribe to my YouTube channel or check me out on Instagram at Bill Van Lue.